I started climbing when I was eight years old. Climbing is a space where I can concentrate and then everything else just kind of falls to the back. Competitions have a completely different atmosphere. There's pressure, there's like thousands of people watching you. There's film cameras. It's very kind of artificial way of climbing. They let you out for a set amount of time to look at your route and then you go back into isolation. I always try and draw the route down from memory. Just yeah. tell myself not to fall off. When I've been on the podium, it's a very proud moment. Hearing the national anthem play, knowing that you've made that happen. Climbing has changed my life. It has put me back on the right path that's actually leading somewhere. I first noticed there was a problem with my foot when I was 15. I was diagnosed with various different things, a flat feet, an allergy to my trainers. My foot had turned blue and it was a whole year after that pain started that they actually realised that there was something wrong with the circulation. It took my dad five days before I would actually acknowledge the fact that my leg had been amputated. I could still feel a foot. Every morning he would tell me that my leg had been amputated and then the next day I would wake up and he said, oh, do you remember what we were talking about yesterday? And he'd have to tell me again. I was unconscious between operations. They didn't tell me. They made my parents make the decision. When I was discharged from hospital, I had a week or two at home and then my mum made me go straight back to college in the wheelchair. I felt separated and lonely. Going back to college so soon after the amputation affected my mental health a lot. It started to deteriorate. There was a lot on. If I'd had the time at home, I could have adjusted a lot better. The hardest point in my life was adjusting to who I am now as opposed to who I was and learning how to walk again. I did think about giving up. In the most difficult stages, I tended to think about how horrible it was being in a wheelchair. People tend to not really talk to you. If you're with someone else, they'll, they'll ask them rather than talking to me. Once I had the prosthetic, I just didn't trust it and I didn't want to trust it. It was painful and uncomfortable. That first year taught me that anything is really possible as long as you're willing to put the work in. I'd never seen anyone with an amputation or any kind of obvious disability climbing. Decided that I wanted to try it. I heard about the paraclimbing series. I entered the competition. I just wanted to see how I fared against people with a similar disability. I knew where I was before and in my head I could do it, but in reality, I couldn't. People would say, oh, wow, you're so inspirational. They were giving credit where it wasn't really due. And I was terrible climbing the first time. At the 2014 World Championships, I met a fellow amputee in isolation and he offered to make me a prosthetic at cost. Going to America to get the prosthetic made was a totally different experience. 
they showed me around. Everyone was just in this one big room in the middle. In the NHS, there's a male room and there's a female room and you go in and you wait for hours. The NHS foot was just a walk-in foot. When you put pressure on it, it would just slip off the wall. It also had like an ejector button that kept on getting knocked by holes and stuff. So I had like a little cable to stop it hitting my B layer. Quite a lot of the kids found it fascinating. Instructing is a lot of fun. I think it's made me more confident as a person and more adaptable. There were a couple of parents who weren't too happy about someone with an amputation teaching their children. So most of the time I wore trousers to avoid those situations. When I'm root reading for the children, I think about how an able-bodied person would climb it. So it's when I'm climbing that the difficulties arise. If you look at things that I've achieved, I wouldn't have had the opportunity to compete for my country had my leg not been amputated. So I think it's just about finding a way of doing what it is that you want to be doing rather than accepting that you can't. I am competing to try and get back on the team, represent Great Britain again. In April 2017, the climbing wall, Rock Antics, that I was working at closed down, so I stopped instructing. That was the wall that I first learned to climb at. Quite a lot of my life had been revolved around it and it's not there anymore. I want to be happy and feel like I'm doing something that's meaningful. I think life's too short to spend time doing something that your heart isn't in.